We thought we were pretty good on defense after spring ball, having to shut down the run against that offensive line. I really felt like they were going after me. They Maybe were. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just like used to do in practice, right? Uh, check red, check red. <laughs> but let me tell you, you're going to want Pat Fitzgerald to coach for you. I guarantee you. Back to Fitz. Hit the back by number 31, Pat Fitzgerald. Hi, everyone, and welcome to our BTN video recall. Great to have you with us. Dave Revson with you. We're going to take a look back at the 1995 Northwestern team, starting with the game against Penn State and also a little bit of the Rose Bowl from that season, and very pleased to be joined by four of the key participants on that team. We start with the head coach, Gary Barnett, was the National Coach of the Year by essentially everyone who had a National Coach of the Year award that year. Coach Barnett joining us from Arizona. We have uh, Pat Fitzgerald, the current head coach of the Wildcats. Uh, Pat Fitzgerald was the National Defensive Player of the Year, not just in 1995, but in 1996 as well, a college football Hall of Famer and also, of course, the current coach of the Wildcats, the winningest coach in school history. Chris Martin is with us as well. Chris was a three-year starter at defensive back for the Wildcats, went on to a pro career as well, one of the anchors of a defense that led the nation in scoring D during the regular season. And Steve Schnurr, the team's quarterback. Steve, in his first full year as a starter in that season, uh, went on to be all Big Ten the following season and a finalist for the Johnny Unitas Award as the nation's top quarterback. All right, let's take a look at the video from this game. And again, Northwestern 7-1 and coming into the game, uh, a battle of top 15 teams there you are Gary is we're gonna start with the very first drive from you guys where you take it right down to score uh, Steve you needed a big day according to Bob Greasy <laughs> yeah I needed a big day I'd, I delivered 96 yards <laughs> <laughs> you know it's funny on this first drive we go right down the field is probably the most efficient drive we had all season on the offense and uh Penn State was was clearly playing to stop the run as as they should have uh we knew that coming in, and so we used some play-action passing uh, throughout the throughout this drive, and we were able to move the ball quickly down the field. That's the kind of throwing window you want right there. Boy, great offensive line protection. How good was Dwayne? He was just fabulous, guys. Very good. Yeah, I, well, I had the, the fortune of guarding him every day, and uh, remember when Dwayne Bates came in out of Aiken, South Carolina, he was a quarterback. And Coach Barnett would send him down there, you know, probably would never touch the field as a quarterback. So he said, hey, why don't we try him at wide receiver? And literally, he would just go off against the ones. I mean, he was down there, and we just had a tough time because he could attack the ball. Uh, He was a tremendous athlete and leaper. And so he found a home instantly just because of how he used to torch us in practice. And and he carried that mentality over the game. He was truly – tough to defend one-on-one and the way we did such hard play action as we saw earlier that oftentimes got them open yeah I think as coach said the the offensive line had a phenomenal game to allow Darnell but if you look you know Matt Hartle you saw him there if you watch on every one of these runs throughout this game uh, that kid was was an an absolute machine uh, blocking people you see him on the left side of the screen here you know, Steve, as I watched this thing, I thought exactly the same thing. What a great game Hartle had. Yeah, you go across the board, Dave, with that offensive line, you know, Shabbat, uh, all the way across over to the other side, and we'll get a better next series. But we thought we were pretty good on defense after spring ball, having to shut down the run against that offensive line. And I thought that was – that along with our defensive line were the two reasons why we were incredibly successful. We, we, we were strong – Strong up front at the LOS. Well, I think it's the best secondary we had uh, for years, and I think best secondary Northwestern had for years. I mean, that, that to me was always the toughest position to fill at Northwestern. Look at those pads. Well, yeah. they show the replay. <laughs> Look at those I mean, pads. I mean, the, the neck watch, roll. Hey, watch this replay here. Watch me trip. I mean, here's how you become an All-American. Trip, fall down, swipe up a guy's leg. All American Hall of Fame career right there. Man, just what your coach did. Hey, Steve, for you, I brought the neck roll just for today's meeting. So I figured <laughs> I'd pick it out for you, buddy. <laughs> That's awesome. 
<laughs> that added 20 pounds to your look, just a neck roll. I love it. Hey, it was universal look, C. Martin. You know that. That wasn't just me. I was the best unblocked player in the country for two years, man. Matty Rice and Max were unbelievable. But I, I will tell you, though, that the way our defense was designed was for, for Pat to run through clean air. And uh, the defensive line, give, you, give them a lot of credit because they kept the guys off of them so they couldn't climb to the next level. And Fitzy, who was very instinctive, he could see things before it happened. He could flow well with that. And we knew with Penn State, we had to keep them behind the chains. We had to stop their run game and force them to put the ball in the air because we didn't think Wally Richardson was going to be a guy that could do that consistently. And uh, that was a good start for us to, to get off to. I just want to return here from Brian Musso. You guys had outstanding special teams, Gary. I mean, you think about Valenzizi and then Brian Goins after Sam got hurt. Paul Burton was such a good punter and Musso as well as a return guy. Yeah, no question. And we were lucky we had two place kickers at the time because when Sam got hurt, there's a lot of guys that – a lot of teams that just didn't have two guys like that, and we we did. And Goins, a uh, very confident guy, as everybody knows, he had no problem stepping in there. And uh, and Paul was Paul and Brian were just as good as it gets. I, mean, I think we led the country in punt returns that con- that year, and are one of those close to it. And uh, Brian was so good. Another great block by Hartle on the mm-hmm. edge. He was a beast, just an absolute monster. I mean, he get he get behind his bat downhill. I mean, Hartle could thump. I mean, he was he was tough. Played with a lot of grit. And then I I mean, Darnell was you know just a great patient runner, good contact balance. You know, faster than what people thought, and he had good vision. So it was just really good with how we were schemed up up front. Good job by Rob Johnson. Robbie cut that Rob, guy. Cut that Rob Johnson cut block somebody right there, aren't you guys? That was awesome. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> we got a tight end trade here into the boundary motion away. I think I know what's coming up here. Uh, we, we had certainly talked about this play, the potential to see it. Jerry Brown, who I've always said is one of my favorite and best coaches that I've had, had us really prepared. Um, and this was a little bit of a personal battle for me because of all the wide receivers I played in college, my sophomore year, Bobby Ingram <laughs> annihilated me like no other to the point that, you know, he started taking my confidence a little bit. Thank God. Um, coach Brown took me out of the game because I was a young player, but here I roll over. I'm a ha- I'm really a half field player and coach would always tell me, coach Brown, once you got to get off that hash cause you might get a nine route. And that's exactly what Bobby Ingram ran there and uh, fortunately I was able to get in position and locate wasn't a great throw by Wally Richardson but that was just a function of how prepared we were during the course of the week in practice and we get a lot of the turnovers because give our coaching staff credit coach Vander Linden you know he was he was very good at putting us in position to make plays and I think from the defensive line on back you get a good pass rush make the quarterback throw the ball before he's ready to do it that's what led to a lot of those turnovers. Casey Daly, Matt Rice, all the big boys up front, they deserve a lot of credit. And this is where they started to, to chunk us a little bit um, because we were playing such soft coverage. And uh, we just knew that we just couldn't get beat over the top. We would give them underneath stuff, but we couldn't give up the big play. And if we could limit them, then we had a shot. And that's exactly what we – tried to do this was a stretch where I felt like I was being targeted here although I was coming up making the plays I really felt like they were going after me and I think that um they were yeah yeah exactly (laughs) just like used to do in practice right uh check Check red check red (laughs) (laughs) so you know uh, oh yeah on a good day with the program height uh But we were able to get get some get some stops. Here's a big fullback downhill. He was 240 plus. Uh, he was a pounder. Um, they would sneak it to him, and and we had to we had to tackle him with population. We had to get people to the ball. Yeah, we lost momentum, I think, with that missed field goal, and they kind of went down here. And you knew Penn State was going to respond. I mean, this is, you know, like like Steve said earlier, you're talking about one of the storied programs, and we're a little bit on our heels here at the end of the first quarter. Uh, defensively, they're putting together a heck of a drive, but um, I think they're going to end up scoring here. If my recollection is correct, um, 
and I think it's all my fault. I don't think I covered the tight end if, if I remember correctly. Uh, <laughs> decent against the run, not very good against the pass. Uh, so Penn State gets into the end zone here. Shocking. There it is. Makes it 14 to 7 heading into the half. Uh, Steve, what do you remember going into halftime? I remember going into halftime thinking we were playing extremely well um, and, you know, only going in up seven. I uh, felt like the offense needed to get back to form. Uh, defense was playing great um, and, and felt like uh, felt like we, we, we should have had a few more points on the board and, and had a little bit uh, better margin of. Uh, of being ahead. So after that muffed punt, you guys held them to field goal. So it's 14 to 10 at this point. And finally going to get the ball back here in a bit. But again, the defense stepping up guys before that. And, and I think it just stands out. You guys have talked a lot about different defensive performers. But the thing that I marvel about with this team as we see you make a play there, Fitz, is you know, Gary, you can't fake defense. I mean, offense, you can out-scheme people, right? You can run all kinds of crazy formations. But defense, ultimately, you just have to have the guys who are physically tough enough and, and can make the tackles. And, uh, and and it just seemed like this group got to that point. And, and that had always been the Achilles heel for Northwestern was it just seemed like you know, couldn't figure it out on defense, didn't have enough guys. What changed in this year? Well, it really started to change the year before. We, when we when I first got there, we tried to throw the ball all over the place. And uh, I'll tell you, when you do that, it's hard to learn to play defense. And uh, I, I got tired of having Wisconsin run right down our throats. And so Vandy and I had a talk, and Vandy says, uh, Coach, and, until we learn to run the football, uh, we can't stop it. And he was exactly right. So we made a change in, in 94 – and just started in this offense and, and defined it as the, as the two years went on. And you got to have the right chess pieces too. But in the end, we turned it up. We end up the best scoring defense in the country. We didn't turn the ball over. Or we had the best uh, uh, turnover ratio. And we led the country in punt returns. And that is a complete team. And I think going to a physical offense and uh, playing the game differently – was was probably the really real key to that coach you talked about steve being third string going into the fall campus we see a, a pass interference there throwing the ball towards wayne how did steve step up and become the quarterback that you needed him to be well it was you know in fall camp we, we i mean we had a lot of stuff go on lloyd abramson didn't even show up he quit the team steve shows up in a boot uh, I think Chris was second team at the end of the spring, but in our meetings, uh, and you know, we just knew we had to settle the quarterback spot. And in our meetings, it was very evident to me and and Craig and everybody else that Steve was going to be our quarterback. We needed Steve to be our quarterback, and he needed to know that we believed in Steve. And we tried our best to make sure that he did that. But um, we, we just we couldn't we couldn't hesitate in in the fall camp. We had to get on with it. This is a great call, by the way. This call uh, by Greg Meyer on that reverse. That's a great play. But uh, we just needed to get down to it, get Steve going, and that's pretty much what we did. And and he reacted. He responded. You know, uh, it, it was Steve Schnur. It wasn't so much anybody else. It's a devastating block, Steve. Yeah, this was, uh, this was one of my – I don't know about that handoff from growing up. You watch me, I get – this is the hardest tackle I think I had all year. It tackled me. <laughs> <laughs> That's a ball fake, Fitz. That's what that was. He thought I had the ball. 96 yards, Steve. 96 yards, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Look at me drawing guys off sides. My game. Carnos. <laughs> Great thing with Steve. Darnell. Steve never lacked confidence, even when he wasn't starting, though. He was very successful in high school, coming out of SLU in St. Louis. He had won championship there. So he kind of had that unflappable confidence. And then he also just was so well-liked. I mean, the players really wanted to be around him. We lived in the same dorm. Um, he's a guy that could galvanize the huddle. And I think guys really rallied around him. And I think that's the big thing. He brought, him, brought us together offensively. 
helped to create an identity, I think, for our offense, which we had been lacking a little bit. Um, and he just he did it by being, you know, the, the ideal leader. Graham, Janice, Pageant, Johnson. You know, those guys. the other side with Shabbat and Carlos, man, those guys. Drexler, unbelievable job. Look at Bees downfield blocking. Big money Bees. Yep. Big time. <clears throat> And we Dave Beasley really would always come in and make some big plays too. We would sprinkle him in on reverses. He'd he'd come in, we'd isolate him. And every every now and then Bees would make a big play that would charge our offense. So that's just sort of who we are right there. Here comes the power. Yep. Shane Graham, good block, bearing somebody. Darren Drexler, double tight ends. So that was that touchdown you guys really felt you needed to get, Steve, and then the the defense. Stepping yeah. up here, we see Fitz. Uh, Unblocked. Fitz, of course. Yeah. Unblocked. Uh, uh, well, uh, no doubt. But, you know, it's interesting in, in looking through some of the stuff that you guys were saying in the aftermath of this game, um, you know, both Coach Barnett and uh, Steve, I think you talked about it too, talking about a, a coach on the field and that, that Fitz kind of fit that role for you guys. Uh, to, to what extent did you anticipate that, that he could become the, the coach he's been, Gary? Well, I think the sophomore year, uh, we were in three days up in beautiful Kenosha, and uh, we back in for a staff meeting after the second practice. And uh, I just made a statement, because I'd watched practice, and I just walked in and said, I know you guys are all going to coach at different places. You, maybe you'll be head coaches, but let me tell you, you're going to want Pat Fitzgerald to coach for you. I guarantee you. And that was his sophomore year. And, uh, it, you know, you could just tell. And, and uh, you know, Fitz had everybody's respect. He was a jokester, by the way, a prankster. Yeah, uh, but uh, just a guy that knew where the play was going to go. And it was a combination of Vandy and him and, and, and everybody else on the defense, of course. But he just had it. And, uh, fortunately, we had – truthfully a team of that. I mean, we had a bunch of guys that sort of in their own way did the same sort of thing. And uh, you combine that with chemistry, um, then you've got a chance to be a really, really good program and team. And that's, that's what we were. See the celebration here. What do you guys remember in the aftermath of this game? And Fitz, I can start with you. Well, just the chaos here on the field. I mean, this was the first time and I think our whole career that the, Dyke Stadium, now Ryan Field, is sold out in purple and white. And as you watch the, our fans really finally, I think, strip those 24 years of frustration off with their celebration, was uh, it was something to behold. It was awesome. It was um, – we knew we still had work to do, but it was it was uh, an awesome feeling to have that, that, uh, that type of environment, something that we dreamed of when we went. The Coach Barnett sold us on, and to be a part of was something special. This team – embodied the word trust uh it, it was it was incredible and, and like no other team i've ever been on or been a part of this team had total trust in each other and, and anybody we put in front of them and uh it was uh, it was so much fun i can tell you that it, it was work but it was so much fun to see these guys and be with them every day I do want to get us to the Rose Bowl, and I know the game did not end the way that you guys wanted it to, but just an incredibly memorable day. Speaking as as one who was there, it was amazing to see all the purple in the stands. It was just incredible how much this team brought the Northwestern community together. First bowl appearance in 47 years. It was the first Big Ten championship in 59 years. We're seeing some of the scene setting here. Coach Barnett, take us through kind of the buildup to this game and, and particularly from where you sat. It was a big buildup. Uh, I had complete confidence in our football team. We were healthy going into the game except for Fitz. And um, it was – we had a challenge in, you know, uh, in the team we were playing in SC and they had alternated quarterbacks every game and – they sort of threw us off guard in that game by not alternating quarterbacks a little bit. And then we put together a game plan that, that, uh, that Vandy and I did. And it was probably more my insistence than Vandy's that we, we go man free on uh, Keyshawn Johnson. And 
And I know today, Bandy and I, whenever we talk, that's the first thing that comes up is that we wish we'd have planned differently. I don't know. Vandy can tell you exactly what he wishes he would have done. I just wish we'd have done something differently. And uh, But we had our chance. We got in, and we, and we went ahead in that game, and we just couldn't hold on to it. Um, and, yeah, I went to the night. I went out at midnight the night before because I wanted to see the purple painted in Pasadena in the Rose Bowl without a crowd and just having some time to myself. And uh, walking through the tunnel, uh, speaking for myself, and I'm sure the players, but for surely for me, it was mystical. Uh, pulling down in that bus in that Arroyo was mystical. Going in that locker room where so many great players had been and walk out that tunnel where so many great players and great teams had gone. You know, it was the whole, whole experience was mystical. We played our butts off. Uh, we didn't win the game, but uh, we had a great experience, I can tell you that. Interested from each one of you, and Fitz, I can start with you. What has been the impact of this team on your life? Oh, I think it, uh, it, it changed my life. I mean, my mom and dad didn't go to college, you know, selfishly. I'm not at Northwestern and where I'm at today without, you know, my parents, my high school coaches and Coach Barnett and Coach Vanderlyn and Greg Brand to give me an opportunity. I wouldn't be here today, so... Just incredibly grateful and thankful for, for all the opportunities and hopefully make uh, the guys proud with representing them today. Chris? You know, I still run Mount Trashmore. <laughs> so, I mean, literally and figuratively, it's a big part and impact on my life. I take my boys there to run it. Um, coach a lot in the area. The, the, the same antidotes, same stories that Coach Barnett, Coach Brown, imparted to us. I use those as part of my coaching regimen. Um, and just the resolve, no matter what you're dealing with, what you're going through, you know, stay glued to the process and, and good things can happen. But ultimately, it's about having the right team, not athletes, the right team. I think that's the biggest thing that I try to utilize and the biggest thing that I learned from that season. Steve? Yeah, it certainly, certainly changed and impacted my life. Uh, I was able to meet my my wife at Northwestern uh, went on to, uh, to have, have some kids. They're all Northwestern fans. And, um, yeah, just great relationships. Uh, first first person in my family to graduate from college, uh, like Fitz said, and um, changed the trajectory of, of my career after college, uh, knowing what, uh, what goal setting and, and accomplishments uh, you, can, you can achieve uh, by setting your, setting your mind to what you want to do. What I hope it did as much as anything, it just, it validated Northwestern. You know, it, it all of a sudden people looked at us differently and uh, we, we, we got respect and, uh, you know, Fitz and Randy have done a great job of maintaining that and even taking it at a, to a much higher level th than we did. This group, or just they just did things in a special way, and they, it was really hard to do what they did, really hard to do what they did, and and that in itself speaks volumes for those players. I mean, and, and for other people in our program, but that is so hard to do, and and uh, you know, I just applaud them for what they did and how they did it. Well, that is a great place to end it, Gary Barnett. Pat Fitzgerald, Chris Martin, Steve Schnurr, thanks so much for joining me. Really a pleasure to look back on this 95 team with all four of you.